I would actually then talk about uh, the new technologies for wholesale central bank money settlement, where, I mean, as central bankers in any case, uh, but are really convinced that settlement of wholesale financial market transactions in central bank money supports the efficiency and also the stability of the financial system. So today I would like to speak about then how the euro system plans to deal with the advent of new technologies and in particular of DLT. And I will also mention the one or the other open point uh, where market participants uh, can really contribute to a lot and actually ought to take action themselves also. So just do I get this right? In any case, what you should have seen on the left would have been a nice stylized uh, presentation actually of, and you can see that maybe in the PDFs that you, will, uh, that you will get, a stylized presentation of a DLT network with different actors who in a DLT world can actually have an, a different operational role. You, uh, you can see uh, stylized smart contracts uh, and also different actors on this, um, uh, sorry, and also different assets on the, um, on the network, including then also, uh, yeah, also central bank money or money actually circulating in it. And that's one of the key points. So the first is, uh, in addition to this operational role, so that money, securities, and any other asset would be actually recorded as digital tokens on a shared network. Um, second, when we actually asked many associations in the euro area and also national ones to, uh, to provide feedback to us, the response was clear. So the expected benefits by market stakeholders were atomicity in the settlement, which to quite some extent, I mean, with our integrated settlement, we can already do today, uh, but then broader and across more assets. Then also decentralized programmability and the ease of reconciliation. So the single source of truth. Thirdly, absent a full migration of everybody to DLT by all, there would be a coexistence with existing technologies. And that's very plausible. Eh? I mean, if you are, I, I mean, that can be that different countries work with different speeds on this. But even within an economy, I mean, just last month I was speaking at the conference, an operational one, and then some custodians were saying, ah, you know, ISO updates, I don't know. My client, some of my clients still send me faxes. So if that, is a, if that gives you a flavor of this, okay, so that's also something that, uh, that also existing technology will, will probably last for quite a while. And I come back to that later. And then the fourth point is that central bank money settlement is still needed as an enabler. So it's not a question of whether we do that actually in an efficient way, because even now we could actually offer instant settlement 24 seven. We have the technology for that, we have the systems. There are other reasons why we don't do it. But it's rather a business case issue, uh, and actually that market participants think there could be actually new, new opportunities and then more efficiency, so on the market side, and central bank money is needed because it's safer. I mean, the title is clear, so central bank money settlements <laughs> <laughs> remains, remains important uh, and, uh, and is actually, so not just because we central banks say you should do this, but actually because there's really demand, because it's the safest settlement asset. Now, there are, um, so now there are actually other, I mean, how could we do this? So there are four conceptual solutions. I now try to point it out. So uh, can I show this here? Yes. Okay, let's give it a try. So the, I mean, the, basically the first is the most intuitive one. There would be a DLT, a market, market DLT. Sorry, this really doesn't look so nice. But here are assets on it, uh, if you take just the example of an asset. And we will do central bank money settlement in our target services, or at least in existing technologies. So actually two central banks of the euro system have worked on that. So the Bundesbank, who actually then has a, a trigger chain that triggers then a transaction in T2, so actually in the existing target system, um, so the RTGS. The other option is that actually Banca d'Italia they actually would work not with a trigger chain, but with APIs, and then they would settle in in the clone of our instant payment solution that we have, the TIP system. We cannot use the real one because that's reserved for retail payments. Uh, but there, there could be a copy paste of this and then settlement could be done. So that's in existing technologies. So that's using the current technology. And that sounds like the cheapest way to go, because the, at least for us, because the central bank would not have to change and still DLT transactions could be settled. 
The second possibility is similar in concept. The only difference is uh, that people say, I mean, for in particular, liked by people who actually think that uh, if the asset is on a DLT, the cash should also be as a token. So we would actually have T2 on DLT, if I may say so. So our RTGS system on DLT. Um, and then uh, that's also another way of interoperability. So conceptually it's the same, it's just the technology that we use would be different. Some say that's much smoother, that's much more logical. If something is on DLT, the other one works efficiently, but we don't know because as long as the DLT, I mean the DLT platforms are not the same, there might also be frictions. So that's something to be proven. The third possibility is if you think of where we come from with an integrated settlement that we offer in our target two securities or T2S as it's called now is that we have the asset and the, and the cash together on the platform, it's settled. That we could do also, so not T2S on uh, steroids, but actually on, on DLT also, so putting that together. We are certainly not ruling this out, but we are not pursuing this at this very moment because it's something, I mean, not in the short term, because it's in any case, because it's something rather tricky to actually set up a DLT platform that carries not just what we do, uh, from, um, but actually also all market assets and is also, of course, there could be quite some discussions, is that needed, is that wanted, and what are the conditions for this? Uh, then the third, the fourth one is actually that we would, like banknotes, we would issue central bank money, we would then actually uh, give it away on somebody else's platform and it would circulate there. It would also allow for an integrated settlement, but the question is, how can we control this? Because you would like that actually central bank money remain safe, that it's not fake, that it's not double spending. So we would probably want to have a, well, quite some say on the governance, not easy to reach, uh, technically demanding to control this. Also, I mean, existing rules have to be adhered to AML, sanction screening, etc. I will not go into the details now, but those are the ways that could be done. This is actually what the BIS and others are referring to, so a shared unified ledger, the monetary authority of Singapore with a global layer one for a market infrastructure, name it as you wish. Um, so that's something, it's complex to do, one has to assess what would be the next steps there. What we have decided as next steps is to go beyond the proof of concept. So in April of this year, the governing council made an announcement and said we will actually offer on an ad hoc basis settlement in central bank money. Now we are currently working or finalizing the plans for this, which we have done also together with the industry, where we have actually the, the contact group just, uh, just mentioned, where we have a dialogue on how to do this best. So, as you see, um, we will actually do this for interoperability, the two interoperability solutions. So what you saw on the earlier slides. Um, and we will do so in next year in the form of it. Um, I mean, the formal decision is still to be done, but uh, the, the clear plan is that we will do that via trials, so real central bank settlement, and via experiments, so mock central bank uh, money settlement with the focus being on the real transactions in these two approaches with the three solutions that I've mentioned. Also because the interoperability... Okay. Also because the interoperability type of solution, A, they are easier to implement, but also they will be needed probably anyway because until we get one common shared ledger for everybody and agree on that, there will be quite some time and even then some people may you want to have an interlink with other system, other DLT platforms, say by non-financial corporations. This is of course helping us to learn, but also the market to learn and gain experience with this, point one. The other one is that also market participants can then use our trials and actually not only gain experience, but also showcase their use of DLT to customers, uh, interested other parties, and, and make sure that it, and also make it visible that it works. And beyond. So first of all, of course, once the, the trial is over, so that will be from, uh, I mean, in the, in the second half, I mean, it starts in the second quarter and it will go towards, uh, towards Christmas or closer to I mean, November or so. And uh, once we have the results, we will, of course, look at them and see what do we learn from this, point one. But the other one is that 
I mean, we are making, as a euro system, as central bank, we are making an effort to ensure that central bank money remains a monetary anchor, as we call it. So it's supporting the stability, integration, and efficiency if central bank money can be used. So if you, as a market, were to go for DLT, so we would have quite some interest in actually being able to provide central bank money settlement for whatever transactions you are carrying out, given that it helps on the safety uh, and the efficiency of the system. Challenges there are, question one, will DLT actually be the future? Secondly, I mean, how to scale this market? Does one have to go somewhere on DLT platforms where is, there's broad access to everybody? How does one then have control? Control risk ensures sufficient privacy for selected information, even on private networks, by the way. Um, then will there be, as I said, a single network, or will there be many networks? How to do, deal with this? How to do that? And that there is not a refragmentation on which I come, uh, come back in a second. Then also there will be a prolonged coexistence of technologies across and within countries and market segments, as I've mentioned before. How do we manage this? Also as an industry. And then there is the issue of applying outdated but popular standards to new DLT technology. I'm not sure, I might not make myself popular with everybody in the room here, but I mean, when I was on this operational conference and somebody said, as I said, the, the example with the faxes and saying, no, I, I don't want us to migrate or to tell my customers to migrate to ISO 20022. I mean, I'm happy if everybody goes to ISO 15 from their proprietary standards and faxes, etc. not needed. But if I then think we want to introduce a market, smart contracts, Program, decentralized programmability, straight through processing, but we deal with an ISO 15 standard with limited length of fields, not enough structure to make sure that we all understand the same thing for the same variable that is mentioned somewhere, uh, then that's not a good start for a DLT environment. So one of the challenges is also then to avoid fragmentation through interoperability, harmonization, up-to-date standardization, of course, with an important role for the market. So the ICMA's bond data taxonomy is a very good, good, uh, good, good way forward and, uh, and such initiatives, of course, would be worth, are really worth supporting, of course. So to sum up, so as central banks, as a euro system, so we plan to offer next year the settlement in central bank money, but whether this will be a success story that's also up to you in the market to deliver that. And that is relevant business cases for this that show actually it's worthwhile so that you and your investors are actually convinced. And the other one is, of course, to also work on modern standards that actually allow this to take off. Thank you. <laughs>